from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program from people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 71. In our last episode, we looked at the conservation status of animals. We learned the language functions and forms needed to research and report on the conservation of animals. Well, today we look at the efforts that are being taken to help wildlife survive in our human dominated world. First, let's review some of the language we employed to report on an animal's conservation status. Now, these are some of the terms you're likely to encounter in researching the animal on which you're reporting. Beginning with the most severe, your animal may be extinct or extinct in the wild. This means there are no living examples of the extinct species on Earth. Or in the second example, none except those in captivity. The first case includes passenger pigeons, and all dinosaurs. Now critically endangered, the next level is critically endangered. Now this designation is for species facing an, an extremely high risk of extinction in the immediate future. Species under this category include the black rhino, the California condor, and the ivory-billed woodpecker. Try to say that, ivory-billed woodpecker. And um, here it is on your screen. You can see what that looks like. The international rating follows the critically endangered category with simply endangered, those with a high risk rather than an extremely high risk. Now this poster shows a number of animals that are endangered. These are only a few that could become extinct and they're from all over the world as you can see. Now, for the system used in the United States, there is only one endangered category, and that is endangered. An example of this is the spotted owl. Now, this means that if something doesn't change, this animal is likely to become extinct. This classification brings protective laws into effect and an effort to save the species that's endangered. In the 1980s, researchers found that the spotted owl is in danger of becoming extinct due to the destruction of its habitat. Spotted owls need old-growth coniferous forest to survive, and most of that habitat has been destroyed by the timber industry in Oregon and other parts of the Pacific Northwest. Now, laws went into effect that protected the little remaining old-growth forest from logging, and this action immediately stopped logging on a, the very trees, as it turns out, that the industry was geared toward milling. The marbled murrelet, as reported in our last episode, has now been added to the endangered species list by the state of Oregon. They also need old growth forests for raising their chicks. Now, another status that you may find for your subject is vulnerable. Now, this would include animals that have not yet been listed as endangered, but will likely be put on the list unless measures are taken to save it. And those measures, of course, have to be successful. In the ESA system, this would be the designation of threatened. A good example is this sage grouse. The population of these ground-dwelling birds has fallen as they lose grassland habitat. With this particular species, conservation groups, government agencies, and both federal and state and industries have all planned and worked together to keep the sage grouse population strong enough to avoid being listed as endangered. Now, there's been a great deal of cooperation here. The results have been positive, and this model of cooperation has been embraced 
in many areas. However, with the current administration weakening the enforcement of environmental laws, it remains to be seen if this level of cooperation continues. Now you may find the subject of your research is experiencing reduced populations. Internationally, this could have them qualified as near threatened status. This is not an official designation under the ESA. Sometimes the reduction is seen in the universal population and in others it may be a local problem. For example, the roseate spoonbill. While no longer endangered, they have been affected by areas of mosquito control activities. Another example is the ruby-throated hummingbird species. Their populations have shrunk due to habitat loss in the part of their migration habitat. Now you may find that the population of your animal that you're researching is stable. Now this is actually good news as long as their populations are healthy to begin with. An example is the Arctic tern. Stable is not an official designation in either system of listing. It could be under the international designation of least concern. The same can be said of your animal if it's said to be common. Now that's good news if a species is common when they're plentiful and well distributed. Some animals have the word common in their name. Make sure they're still common or numerous like the common guillemot. Now, even with some species that are common today, it's worth noting if they were threatened or endangered in the past and what brought about their recovery. Let's see some of those descriptive words again. Um, extinct, uh, let's see. Actually, we'll just have to remember those words. Remember, we started with extinct and then we had critically endangered or endangered, vulnerable or threatened, near threatened, stable or common, is making a comeback or is recovering. Now these are terms you're likely to use in reporting on the conservation status of the animal you're researching.